Hey everyone, this is day three. Ariel still distracted from us yesterday. We had a good day today, actually. Um, Ariel, what was it today that you saw and you remember? The color white. Where? IWC. Pilot Watch. Yep. IWC apparently is celebrating a 150th anniversary of them. Of white and blue. White and blue. And they have some nice limited edition watches. Not all of them are super expensive. Some are in the vicinity of the $5,000 range. Those are my top watches from there. Um, and Parmigiani, I think it's in the Calpa collection. Yep. Really a big case. Like, like this big. <laughs> no. It's a cool watch. It's got a new integrated chronograph movement, which I yep. think is exciting. Look, for a solid gold watch, it's heavy. It's about 30 something thousand bucks for the non limited edition one. Yeah. It's a hell of a value. Now, don't get me wrong, it's difficult to stay in the state that said this $30,000 watch of good value for a lot of people, but I think if you'll agree with me that if you were going to spend that amount and you want something distinctive and high quality, yeah. it's a solid option, right? I like Parmigiani, but I don't like that watch. It's bringing me back like a couple of years ago. Like, it's no joke, it's huge. It's, it's massive. It's Even way bigger. For our yes. And even for, like, you have to go, like, Schwarzenegger, seriously, to pull it off. Otherwise, you will just look. Yeah, and oligarchs. So if you're watching and you are an oligarch and you want a massive gold watch with a gold movement, that's not the 30-something, it's more expensive, all gold, everything, then you're in good hands with Parmigiani. Yeah, that's right. Pop by. Who else did we meet with today? Ferdinand Berto. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. That was today. Ferdinand Berto watches are stunning. I mean, look, if you really need to spend close to $300,000 on a watch or more, that would be yeah. a place to go. It's two thirty, actually. Isn't the one with Just the Fuse, to be fair. Isn't the one with the Fusain nope. chain even more? No. Wow. They all have the Fusain chain, and it's two twenty and two thirty. Only two thirty. What's interesting is, you know, a lot of the watches that come out, we don't actually get to see. Uh, we're here at Cartier, for example, and outside of the camera, there's these very sets of booths or w windows. Um, they have these piece unique watches. We, we started the day with Van Cleef and Arpels, which is. Um, mostly ladies' watches, but they have some really nice men's pieces. But I think it's interesting that uh, that we never really get to cover some of the most beautiful watches because they make one. Um, we went to Vacheron, for example, and Vacheron Constantin often has one-of-a-kind watches that are excellent and amazing and you'll never get to see. Art pieces. We're talking Art about pieces. not necessarily high complications, but we're talking about watches with enamel dials and engraved dials and this beautiful work of works of art, actually. See, for us, there's basically two types of watches that we look for at the show. There's watches that are affordable and awesome for a mainstream luxury buyer, whatever that is. And then there's exceptional pieces of art that, in a lot of ways, um, are, are museum pieces, right? They're, they're meant to be produced, uh, no, no expense is spared, they take years to make. There was one particular uh, piece unique from Van Cleef and Arpels that took two years to make, just one piece. Yeah. And I asked them what's the price, and they're like $2 million. I'm like, okay, I get it, I get it. With Swiss wages these days, that's fair. But there's a lot of watches in the middle that struggle to get our attention, I feel. It's like for the aspirational super rich person, Yes, of which there are many actually. There are many. So it's like you are definitely rich, but you're not super rich, but you yeah. want to look. And that's a whole area that I'm, I'm still exploring and trying to understand, yeah. but um, there's a lot of products represented here um, that are for people that are looking to spend between, I'll say, twenty and maybe $80,000. Yeah, stay tuned for some feature articles on that because it is genuinely an interesting topic, that, that yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely be exploring that a lot. Um, one of the things the industry is doing is not showing us all the watches that they're going to come out with over the course of the year. They want to keep surprises. It's yeah. a little annoying for us because we know how to keep a secret. We don't necessarily need to publish them now, but all that means is that there's going to be stuff um, throughout the year that's going to come out. That there'll be additional new stuff. I'm trying to think, who else did we meet with today? I just wanted to add, like, that, yeah, there are things that they are not showing to us, saying they are just for the sales room or salespeople or whatever. We're going to go next year as salespeople. So if you're a retailer and you really want us um, to hang out with you and, and yep. entertain you, um, we will do it's, so. It's an entertaining yeah, yeah, thing. We, yeah. we won't say that all your meetings will go as planned, <laughs> but they'll definitely be different than what you're used to. Oh, jeez. Yeah. So who else did, uh, did we see? There's Mont Blanc coming up right now. We have Van Cleef, IWC, Fernando Berton. You saw Razons. I saw Razons. I had an interesting conversation with Benoit, who was the founder of Razons, about the e-crown system. 
There's been some rumors going around that it has some conductors which allowed them to produce this essentially electronic module that goes inside of an otherwise mechanical watch that allows it to, let's say, after it will set the time for you. And like I said, there's been some rumors out there that, that some like Silicon Valley guys are funding it, and that's that's not true. It was it was self-funded. And, um, the electronics were um, developed in Belgium and, the, and produced the hardware. Produced that's pretty cool. Money. It has to be um, sent. And, and none of the stuff is necessarily communicated. What's the price on that? Sorry to interrupt. There has not been a price, but mm. I kept pushing him. He says it's going to be under fifty. Okay. Which again, oh, that's a ballpark. It's, it's something. They're, they're, look, Enormous expense. They can't charge too much for it. And again, the average price of a Reson is between twenty and forty thousand. That's what I was going to say. It's not that much more when you are in the market for a Reson anyway. But I think if that's you are. definitely a product that um, we're going to be excited to show um, as it gets closer to work. But there's a lot of stuff that's sort of in development. I feel like we're kind of in a. We, we've come to a show that has to be here because it's scheduled. But it feels like a lot of the brands are in some type of mid-cycle development. Yes. Like there's a lot of interesting things that are going to come in. Maybe as long as five or six years. That's a spot on assessment. There's a lot of work in progress this year. Last year it was this and that. You could put your finger on it. This year there's so much happening behind the scenes. It, it shows, it feels like it's so. It's worth uh, staying tuned to the watch industry Product for the next couple of years. A lot management wise. So, mm. um, we're optimistic and enthusiastic about yeah. hearing what's going to keep coming and seeing what's new. We're going to keep bringing to you all. Stay tuned for tomorrow. See you guys. Oh, and Ariel, there's a bunch of people asking, like, what's the watch that you were wearing? So, what is it now? Yesterday was a question. I saw yesterday, people were, like, curious, what's the... It was a Bramont yesterday, I think it was. I was wearing a, a, an uncommon Bramont, a limited edition, um, for a U.S. retailer in Texas called Timeless. It's, it's, I, just ha I really like the design, it's clean, no date, nothing like that. It's the cleanest dial that they've ever produced. Um, today, I'm wearing a, a dress watch. Which I don't know how well you can tell the details. This is the um, the Carl uh, Sushi and Son, the Waltz Number no. One, uh, which is really cool. I think we'll have a review some of that soon. But um, I was really impressed with the watch. That's good. And I'm wearing my trusty good old Grand Seiko. It's actually attached to the wrist. It's not allowed to take it off. It's never coming off. It's so weird taking wrist shots because I have to like put the the other watches over this watch. So there is that. See you guys tomorrow.